In this video, I'm going to provide a brief overview of the application of Representational Similarity Analysis, or RSA, to ERP data. RSA is widely used in fMRI, but it can also be used with ERPs to generate some amazing results. It's a general purpose method for assessing links among different kinds of neural measures, computational models, and behavior. Each of these sources of data has a different format, which makes them difficult to compare directly. For example, we have bold activation across a set of voxels in fMRI, voltage over time at a bunch of electrodes in EEG, and a pattern of activation across the units of a neural network model. How can we compare these different data formats? RSA solves this problem by converting each source of data into a representational similarity matrix, or RSM. We can then look at how well the RSMs from the different data sources are correlated with each other. OK, let's unpack all of this. To get a representational similarity matrix, you need to look at the pattern of activity produced by several different inputs. For example, imagine that we showed participants a set of 20 scenes, and for each scene we obtained the pattern of bold activation across visual cortex. We could then ask how similar the pattern of activation is for scene 1 versus scene 2. There are many ways of quantifying similarity, but we could simply calculate the Pearson R correlation coefficient between the two patterns of bold activation. We might get a correlation of 0.84 between the fMRI patterns for scene 1 and scene 2. And we might find a correlation of 0.09 between the fMRI pattern for scene 1 and the fMRI pattern for scene 3. We have a total of 20 scenes, so we'd end up with a 20 by 20 matrix of correlations. The result is called a Representational Similarity Matrix, or RSM, because it expresses the pattern of similarity in the neural representations of the 20 scenes. We'd get a separate RSM for each subject. The correlation between a given scene and itself is always 1, so we ignore the diagonal. And the upper and lower triangles are mirror images, so we ignore the upper triangle. Some researchers prefer to use a representational dissimilarity matrix, which is just 1 minus the correlation. In the end, you get exactly the same results either way. We could also get a representational similarity matrix for a neural network model that's trained on scene recognition. We could feed each of the 20 scenes into the network and note the pattern of activation across the units for each scene. We could then examine the correlation between the active pattern for each pair of scenes. This would give us a 20 by 20 representational similarity matrix for the neural network. We could then ask whether the RSM for the model is similar to the RSM for the fMRI data. We would do this by just looking at the correlation between the lower triangles of the two representational similarity matrices. We use a rank order correlation because we don't want to assume anything about the scaling of these two matrices. If the matrices are correlated with each other, this indicates that the representational geometry of the model is predictive of the representational geometry of the fMRI data, and vice versa. We could also have subjects view these 20 scenes while we record the EEG. We could then make an average ERP for each scene and calculate the similarity between each pair of scenes in terms of the ERP data. To take advantage of the millisecond level temporal resolution of the ERP data, we could do this separately for each time point. That is, for each time point in an average, we can compute a scalp distribution. We can then get a 20 by 20 representational similarity matrix for that time point by computing the correlation between the scalp distributions for each pair of scenes. We actually have a separate scalp distribution for each time point in the ERP waveform, so we have a separate RSM for each time point. For example, if we have a sampling rate of 250 Hz, one sample every 4 milliseconds, we'd get something like this. We have an RSM at time 0, which is the onset of the stimulus. Then we have one at 4 milliseconds after stimulus onset, 8 milliseconds after stimulus onset, etc. This would go on for several hundred milliseconds, depending on the length of the epoch that was used during averaging. Of course, the RSMs during the period immediately following stimulus onset will be noise, because information about the stimulus hasn't reached the cortex yet. For a visual stimulus, the RSMs will start being structured around 50 to 70 milliseconds after stimulus onset. Remember, each cell in these RSMs is just the correlation between the ERP scalp distributions for a pair of scenes at that time point. We can then correlate the RSM at each time point with the RSM for the fMRI data or the neural network model. This is just the rank order correlation between the RSMs. We'd expect pretty low correlations at time 0, because the ERP RSM should just be noise at that time. We'd then compute the correlation between the ERP RSM at 4 milliseconds with the fMRI and model RSMs, 
and then we'd repeat this for every time point in the ERP waveform. Each Spearman row correlation value indicates the representational similarity between the ERP data at a given time and either the fMRI data or the pattern of activation in the model. We can plot these values as waveforms much the way we'd plot ERP waveforms, except now the y-axis is the correlation between the ERP RSM at a given time point and either the fMRI RSM or the model RSM. So, by abstracting away from the original units of measure and creating representational similarity matrices, we can quantify the extent to which the representational geometry of one source of data matches the representational geometry of the other sources. Up to this point, I've been showing artificial data, but here's a real study. They used event-related magnetic fields rather than ERPs, but the principle is the same. You tend to get stronger effects with MEG than with EEG, but given how much cheaper EEG is, I'm not tempted to move to MEG. Subjects in this study viewed a sequence of natural images and performed an orthogonal vigilance task to keep them alert and attentive. Each subject was tested in separate MEG and fMRI sessions with the same images. The goal was to link the temporal resolution of the event-related magnetic fields with the neuroanatomical specificity of the ERP data. To accomplish this, they calculated a representational dissimilarity matrix for the MEG data at each time point, and a representational dissimilarity matrix for the fMRI data for each brain area. Remember, a representational dissimilarity matrix is just 1 minus the representational similarity matrix. The next step was to calculate the Spearman row rank order correlation between the MEG matrix at each time point with the fMRI matrix for each region. This resulted in one Spearman row correlation value for each combination of MEG time point and fMRI brain region. Here's what they found. The intensity at each voxel is the representational similarity between that brain region in the fMRI data and the magnetic field distribution at a given time point in the MEG data. This is completely different from most source localization methods. They're making no assumptions about the physics of EEG or MEG. Instead, these results are obtained by using a variety of visual stimuli to probe the brain and comparing the representational geometries of the fMRI and MEG data.